Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. If you're new here, if you've never seen my face before, my name is Julia, I am 25 years old and I graduated in May 2020 from an Associates in Applied Science Radiologic Technology program. So I went to a community college, it was 21 months straight, clinical, didactic, everything like that. I passed my ARRT radiology boards in July of 2020. Now I have moved on to CT and then MRI. So that was kind of a lot, but I thought I would sit down and do a Q&A, kind of update you guys on what's been going on. I do have a few Q&As from the past, so I will link those down below if this Q&A doesn't happen to answer any of your questions. I do have a full video kind of explaining like how I applied to my program, how I got in my application process, and then kind of my first semester recap. So I have quite a few videos kind of touching on x-ray related stuff. I haven't done a work related Q&A in probably almost a year so it's well overdue also to address this i had surgery last week my knuckles are kind of green from my bruising but all is well here so anyway let's jump right in what are your thoughts on going straight to work at a hospital versus clinic i've heard mixed feelings on both but i've always envisioned myself in a clinic rather than hospital setting but i also hear a hospital will give you more experience my opinion on this is to do whatever feels right to you when it comes to pay, benefits, your hours, things like that, that's going to be personal to each individual. And I'm I'm not one to say whether I like one versus the other. I did work as like a student tech in my second year of the program, so I did get a lot of extra hands-on experience outside of clinical. I was super independent from that job, so I really already had kind of some hospital experience based off of my student tech position. I also worked at a clinic right out of school and I liked it, but the x-ray load was extremely slow. I worked at a university student clinic, so the patient population was all around my age or younger. Um, we also had some international students, but the x-ray load was super, super, super slow. And in turn with that, you'll get a lot of medical assistant roles thrown your way. Typically that's phlebotomy. You can do certain waived CLIA laboratory tests like a urinalysis on the Clinitech. You can do HIV testing, pregnancy tests, things of that sort. So I also did that. But then since I was working for a university, we had to count COVID numbers and how many cases the employees and the students had. So I was in Excel basically six to seven out of my eight hours a day. And I didn't go to school to sit at a desk and be in an Excel spreadsheet all day. I'm just not interested in that. I like to be up on my feet, interact with the patients. I like to start IVs, things like that. So that is why I decided to move on to CT and MRI. Not everyone has this luck. I realize that I'm very aware of that and I'm very thankful for that. So if you guys are unfamiliar, after I graduated, I worked as a radiologic technologist operational generalist was my title. So I worked for that position for 10 months and then I was introduced to this next position and my director at that old clinic was not nice about it. She was like, that's gonna look bad on your resume and all this stuff because I job hopped. But honestly, do what's right for you. Don't let somebody talk you down from pursuing something that you think is gonna be right for you because how will you know if you don't try? I personally think you can work for either of them outside of school. I don't think one is better than the other or one is the right path to do, but you'll have a lot of older seasoned techs that will tell you to go into the hospital setting straight away after you graduate, but I think you should do what's best for you. Update us on how cross training into MRI and CT is going. Do you love it? Would you recommend going into one over the other? I absolutely love CT and MRI. The cross-sectional anatomy has been a whole different ball game for me to learn. With CT and MRI, it's very heavily based on the cross-sectional anatomy, so that's been a whole different thing to learn. And just different pathologies, knowing when to call the radiologist to get delayed images, things like that. So it's definitely been a big learning curve for me. I just started this in April and I have all my CT documentation done, so I actually applied to take boards super recently actually, so I can probably take them here whenever but i really want to buckle down and study and be ready and prepared for them so i can do well on them because i don't want to have to take them again and i just started on mri maybe three weeks ago and that's been going pretty well i tried to start both ct and mri when i started at this new clinic and i would recommend if you can choose to do one at a time because it's very overwhelming ct is very similar to x-ray in the physics aspect because it's x-ray but 
with MRI, it's related to magnets and hydrogen and relaxation times. It's a whole different thing to learn. I will say I do like CT and MRI for the fact that you're with your patients a little bit longer. So yes, I love both of them. Not that I'm degrading x-ray at all. I do really like x-ray, but I was just ready for a change. And I do help out in x-ray still. At the clinic that I work at, we have CT, MAMO, ultrasound, x-ray, and MRI. So it's a very small clinic, but we stay pretty busy and um, I do help out where I can because sometimes our x-ray tech is gone or one's on lunch. So I do still help out in x-ray. As for recommending one over the other, I don't really have a preference. I think that they're both great. And that's not to say I don't love x-ray because I do. I was just ready for a change. If I keep talking, I'm gonna forget I have coffee. What books slash learning tools are you using to study for your CT boards? How are you keeping track of your exams that are required for the registry? So I used ASRT CT Basics, so it's a module. I think it's in the $200 range. I'll link everything below that I mentioned. When you apply for post-primary CT on ARRT's website, it has a whole documentation section for you. I personally input my exams as soon as I can because I'm forgetful and I wouldn't remember what I did on what day. So typically I would just finish up the day of exams and then I would input whatever ones applied. I made a little spreadsheet of what was required, how many repetitions were required and things like that. I made it on Excel on my Works OneDrive that we have, but I can try to figure out a way to share it with you. I can link a few websites down below like CT is Us and there's another one that has like some anatomy YouTube videos that are helpful for cross-sectional anatomy. Honestly though, I think the ASRT CT basics modules covered everything really well. Do you work with or did you go through your program with older adults? I'm about to turn 40 and working towards completing my requirements to apply for the Rad Tech program. I don't think I'm too old by any means, but curious if I'd be in small company with my age bracket. I wanna say we had maybe four people that were in their late 20s, early 30s, mid 30s. We did have a few older people in my program and we also had like a 19 year old. So the age of the program definitely ranges. Also, it'll depend if you go to like a university versus a tech school, kind of just depends on where you're at, who applies at the time, and who gets in. But yeah, I definitely don't think 40 is too old by any means. I've been in retail for 10 years and looking to switch career fields to rad tech. Would you say the schooling and career is worth the switch in the long run? Absolutely. I think general x-ray is a perfect way to start. A lot of people think that you have to switch into a different modality, but honestly, staying in general x-ray is great as well. Um, it's a great career. It's just kind of hard on your body. I think it's such a great field because you can go into CT, MRI, interventional, MAMO, or you can go on to more schooling for ultrasound or nuke med. There are so many different paths. I think it's just such a great starting point to see if you're interested in the field. I definitely think it's worth it for people to think about pursuing it. I would definitely recommend people to take an intro to radiology course just to see if they even have interest. I'm not really sure if hospitals are allowing shadow students right now, but I would definitely suggest shadowing if you can. Are you ever planning to move and work as a rad tech in another state? Um, not really. I have a really great position where I'm at, so I don't really ever foresee myself switching and moving states in the near future, uh, although I would love to. Colorado is such a beautiful state and I have so many friends there, but at the current time, my job is just too perfect to leave, so no, I don't have any plans. Do you work with needles and blood testing? I wanted to become a rad tech, but I get very nauseous at the sight of blood and freak out over needles. Did you have to get a lot of vaccines before being allowed to work? Yes, I work with needles every day by starting IVs and then we do the creatinine blood test with the iStat. And then I did not have to get a lot of vaccines because I was already vaccinated from being in college. I don't think you can go through any medical program without having like flu shots and hepatitis, and things like that. I know most colleges require those, so no, I didn't have to get any vaccines in order to work. I just had to do a TB blood test, so a quantifuron. Trade school in my area doesn't have the right accreditation. Does that mean I shouldn't attend that school? Not necessarily. The JRCERT is the accrediting organization that kind of overlooks a lot of programs. Basically, that just means, hey, we recognize this program as being fit for taking your board's exam after school. Now, that doesn't mean that a program is bad necessarily, but I definitely recommend people to look on the JRCERT's website. They have it organized by state, so you can look up your state and see which programs are available in your state. If it were me, I would apply to a school that is JRCERT, JRCERT accredited, that's hard for me to say, but that's just my opinion. But no, that's not necessarily a bad thing. When you get licensed, is it for one state or do you have to apply for another for a different state? So I'm assuming you're meaning registered when you say licensed. So registered is, 
what makes you able to work as a tech in the United States. So ARRT is the organization. Each state might have different um, individual requirements. So North Dakota, for example, I have to be licensed in North Dakota to work, but Minnesota, which is my next door neighbor, you don't have to be licensed. Registered, yes. Licensed, no, not necessarily. Each state is gonna be different. I know like New York, you have to be licensed, but Georgia, you don't. So it just depends on the state. If you go to a program in that state, you would likely know because your program director would tell you. It's really silly, but every state has different requirements when it comes to licensure, but not registration. How does a typical day at work go for you? How does this job compare to your previous job? I love this job so much more if I'm being brutally honest. I cried every single day at my old job. I would literally go to my car and just sob on my lunch break. I was miserable at my old job, miserable. And I'm so happy and content with where I'm at right now. But to lay out kind of like how my day goes, I get to work around eight, sometimes 8.15, just depending. And then I go into CT, I do the daily quality control, and then I document that in our exam sheet. I verify that our suction machine, oxygen tank, and our crash cart is still locked up and okay. And then if we have any patients right away at 8.30, I'll type in all their information because our modality work list is down right now. So we're in the process of getting a new one. So I type in all of our patient, patient information and stuff. I'll restock linen, restock our IV supplies, um, if we have contrast that's needing to be put together like oral contrast, I will do that um, Kind of different every single day, but pretty consistent a lot of our exams that we do are like heads abdomens chest abdomen pelvis a lot of lung screens tons of calcium scores and then when it comes to MRI on Wednesdays and Fridays We have a different hospital that uses our MRI, but we scan on it but it's their patients. Those days I can't quite go back there yet because I haven't had like testing and stuff done and haven't gone through the orientation for that hospital. It's a whole nother legality issue. I can't be back there quite yet because I haven't gotten all my like signatures from my supervisors, but anyway, and then if I'm back in MRI, I haven't done the quality control back there because our first tech gets there at seven, so he usually does that, but that's typically how a day goes. I usually go to lunch around noon, come back at one, and leave at five. So, that's that. Someone asked what my work schedule is. I work Monday through Friday, eight to five, or 8.30 to five, just depending. And no weekends, no nights, no evenings, no overnights. Favorite go-to scrubs. By far, my favorite is Infinity by Cherokee. I love the jogger style and then pretty much any type of top. My favorite under scrubs, like the long sleeve shirts, are the Med Couture. I think they're the Activate line, but they're great, super stretchy, super comfy. And then I also like Janu scrubs and Urbane scrubs. And I also like the scrub jumpsuit. Do you prefer CT MRI over general radiology, including surgery? Yes, I love CT and MRI so much more. Of course, I'm in the clinic side versus the hospital side, but I still like it a lot. I wasn't a huge fan of surgery. I wasn't, like, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. You know, I was like, okay, if I have to go, I'll go. But I liked portables and fluoro a lot better than surgery cases. Have you ever had someone had a contrast reaction yet? Where's some wood? Don't jinx me. Do you do a lot of exams with contrast? What exams require contrast? Contrast kind of depends on the ordering provider and the radiologist that you work with. And of course, like their protocols and whatnot. But a lot of the exams that we do with contrast are heads without and with, chest, abdomen, pelvis with, chest with, abdomen, pelvis with, soft tissue neck with, that's all CT. And then a lot of the times an MRI, I haven't done an abdomen yet, but I've seen an abdomen with, head without and with, spines if they've had surgery within the last two to three years. And there's a variety of other different exams too that require contrast. Did you ever go back and forth with what field you wanted to go into? Oh, absolutely. I started as a student at NDSU. I was going to pursue nursing, decided that wasn't for me after I worked as a DSP. And then I decided, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. So I went between like journalism and teaching and things that I'm not even interested in. And I kind of bounced around majors a lot. And then I decided to go to Northland, which is where I graduated from. It's technically in Minnesota. Did my generals there for radiology because there's like some program specific ones that are only offered there. And then I applied, moved home. This was when I first started my channel. And then my advisor didn't realize my chemistry lab didn't transfer from NDSU to Northland. So 
they denied my application because I was missing that, which of course was my fault too, but honestly, it was my advisor. She screwed so many people over. She actually doesn't work there anymore. So I took that chemistry class here at NDSU and then I applied again and got in. So then I moved to Grand Forks, did the program for 21 months and moved back. So that was like the last five years of my education journey. So yes, I changed what I thought I wanted to do numerous times. What has been your most rewarding moment in healthcare so far? Just being able to have those patients who are like, you are great at your job. Thank you so much. You've made me feel so much more comfortable. I was so nervous coming into this exam and now like I'm not afraid. Just being able to be there for somebody and know that you did a well enough job that someone isn't nervous to go into their next, next exam. What advice would you have given yourself before starting the Rad Tech program? Don't take everything to heart. Some people just have it out to be mean to others. I don't know why that is, so don't take everything to heart. I also wish I knew more about C-arms and fluoroscopy before I went into the program. What advice would you have given yourself before starting your first Rad Tech job? Gaslighting is so real and don't let people take advantage of you because the more miscellaneous tasks you say yes to, the more you're gonna have on your plate and the more people are gonna expect from you in the future. A lot of the times I had seven different people asking me to do something and then I was trying to figure out which one to do first because all of them thought that their task was the most important and it was just really hard to balance all of that. So I would have told myself to slow down and don't let people walk all over you and stand up for yourself. If you were to decide to switch to ultrasound after the Rad Tech program, is that something you can train into on the job without extra schooling? So I'm pretty sure you have to go through a whole different ultrasound program. I could be wrong, but ultrasound technologists basically have to write like a whole pre-report on what they see to give to the radiologist. So that would be like me scanning a CT abdomen pelvis and then giving a pre-report and telling the radiologist what I think is wrong with the patient. How significant is the pay difference if you are just a Rad Tech versus CT and MRI? Um, so this is definitely going to be different for where you work. Uh, the hospital I used to work at, I had heard through the grapevine that the CT MRI techs only made a couple dollars more than the x-ray techs. I don't know how true that is. Like I said, I work at a clinic, so that's going to be a little bit different pay than if you're like a travel MRI tech. I know one of the hospitals here is hiring travel MRI techs for nearly $70 an hour. Insane. You hear this saying, money is in the modalities. So yes, typically CT, MRI, interventional, ultrasound. Typically, as a technologist, you'll make more money in those fields. And I say typically because that's not always the case, but yes. Of course, it'll depend what state you live in. I often get people asking me like how much I make specifically, and I'm just not comfortable sharing that number. But you can Google radiologic technologist salary in North Dakota, South Carolina, Texas, things like that. So Google definitely has a lot of information on that. Now, is it going to be 100% accurate? No, but at least it will give you kind of an idea or a ballpark. I can tell you from what I have seen, what I have heard from other students in my class, in North Dakota, general x-ray is around $19 to $23 starting. So... CT is typically around 24 to 30, I think, depending where you work. Of course, if you're overnights, things like that, you'll probably make a little more. And the very last question ended off with a banger here. What frustrates you most in your field? The thing that frustrates me the most is, I suppose a lot of fields experience this, but I feel like radiology as a whole is definitely underlooked. Imaging is the eyes of the medical fields. I just wish we were more recognized in shows, for example. Grey's Anatomy pisses me off so bad because the trauma surgeons and the neurosurgeons are sitting there gossiping about their sex life in front of the MRI scanner. That's not how it works. There are technologists that do the scanning for them and then a radiologist reads them. Like it just doesn't work like that. So Grey's Anatomy is the worst show for like a depiction of how healthcare works. I love the show. Don't get me wrong, I still watch it every single week, but those are all the questions I'm going to answer because I'm losing daylight. It's getting a lot darker out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Like I said, I'll link a bunch of different videos down below in the description box. Feel free to ask questions in the comments if I didn't answer something. And that is all. But thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I'll see you guys very soon in a new one.